when it comes to our times of intercession, uh, I try and uh, take inspiration from a variety of, of different sources. Um, sometimes what I find is that there is so much happening in the world that it's hard to find the words, and, and sometimes the words of others can help us here. Um, one such author is uh, an American called Douglas McKelvey, um, who's written two books uh, called uh, Every Moment Holy um, and the sequel Every Moment Holy Volume 2. Um, and his work I find uh, quite powerful, uh, both on a personal level but also for corporate intercession. And so tonight we're going to use uh, one of his intercessions, which is specific to, specifically um, a liturgy for a time of widespread suffering, which I think sums up how I feel certainly about what's happening in the world around us. Um, so I'm going to use this prayer, and if you could pray the words that appear in bold. Christ our King, our world is overtaken by unexpected calamity and by a host of attending fears, worries and insecurities, we witness suffering, confusion and hardship multiplied around us and we find ourselves swept up in these same anxieties and troubles, dismayed by, dismayed by so many uncertainties. Now we turn to you, O God, in this season of our common distress. Be merciful, O Christ, to those who suffer, to those who worry, to those who grieve, to those who are threatened or harmed in any way by this upheaval. Let your holy compassions be active throughout the world even now, tending the afflicted, comforting the broken-hearted, and bringing hope to many who are hopeless. Use even these hardships to woo our hearts nearer to you, O God. Indeed, O Father, may these days of disquiet become a catalyst for conviction and repentance, for the tendering of our affections, for the stirring of our sympathies, for the refining of our love. We are your people, who are called by you. We need not be troubled or alarmed. Indeed, O Lord, let us love now more fearlessly, remembering that you created us and appointed us to live in these very places in the midst of these unsettled times. It is no surprise to you that we are here now, sharing in this turmoil along with the rest of our society, for you have called your children to live as salt and light among the nations, praying and labouring for the flourishing of the communities where we dwell, acting as agents of your forgiveness, salvation, healing, reconciliation and hope in the midst of an often troubled world. And in these holy vocations, you have not left us helpless, O Lord, because you have not left us at all. Your spirit remains among us. Inhabit now your church, your spirit of the risen Christ. Unite and equip your people for the work before them. Father, empower your children to live as your children. In times of distress, let us respond, not as those who would instinctively entrench for our own self-preservation, but rather as those who, in imitation of their Lord, would move in humble obedience toward the needs and hearts of their neighbourhoods and communities. You were not ashamed to share in our sufferings, Jesus. Let us now be willing to share in yours, serving as your visible witnesses in this broken world. Hear now these words, you children of God, and be greatly encouraged. The Lord's throne in heaven is yet occupied. His rule is eternal, and his good purposes on earth will be forever accomplished. So we need never be swayed by the brief and passing panics of this age. You are the king of the ages, O Christ, and history is held in your Father's hands. We, your people, know the good and glorious end of this story. Our heavenly hope is secure. In this time of widespread suffering, then, let us rest afresh in the surpassing peace of that vision, that your whole church on earth might be liberated to love more generously and sacrificially. Now labour in and through us, O Lord, extending and multiplying the many expressions of your mercy. Amen.